Hi guys, I'm Arisa. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show, brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up a bit. We're going to be interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the financial decisions and business models behind their successful brands. Our guest today is Mr. W, Banky W. He's a man of many talents. He's an actor, musician, director, and brand ambassador to brands like Samsung, Uber, and Ciroc. Through his record label, EME, he was responsible for starting the careers of one of the biggest artists out of Africa, Wizkid. So stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Hi, Mr. W. Hey. I almost feel like singing it. Mr. W. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people want to sing I that. know. <laughs> like, yeah. But you're such an impressive guy. And I have to be honest, like, you are my ideal guest for this show. Really? Especially with what we're trying to do in season two. Oh, thank you very much. Because I've been seeing all your money moves, your smart money moves. I don't know moves. what you're talking about. <laughs> and I love it. So, musician, actor, director. Mm -hmm and businessman mm -hmm. <laughs> like you don't play with your um ambassadorship so you right. have samsung uber the rock right what else do you have um those are three those are really three. Those big are three ones for now. let's let's not yes. do because people, the problem with this people start <laughs> thinking that you're walking around office. with this kind of money in your pockets please i don't have a, right. but let's talk about you know the music industry mm -hmm. You started out at a time when people didn't really take the business side of music very seriously. Right. But you started a record label mm -hmm. in 2002. Two? Okay. 2002, so 2003. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what inspired you to go that route? Right. And, you know, do, how did you start? What yeah. kind of capital was involved? You know, um, <clears throat> one of my favorite sayings uh, actually, in, in the EME office now, if you walk yeah. in, we have a wall of inspiration. Okay. So some of the, the things that we hold true as a company. And one of my favorite sayings, and also my business partner, Tunde's favorite sayings, mm. is the best way to predict your future is to create it. And so we kind of heard that, I don't know, 15 years ago, yeah. and we both kind of just held it really Focus true that, you know what, yeah. you know, you kind of have to create the future that you want for yourself. You have to... You know, it's, it's one thing to pray and it's one thing to go and tell the future, but, but it's another thing to, to do it. And so starting out, I think I was in my third year of university in New York. And until that point in my life, I had always loved music. I had yeah. always sang in church, in school, end of year activity on you the streets. <laughs> I was the guy that was always performing. But here I was in my third year of uni and I'd never actually even set foot inside a recording studio. Mm. So I called him and I said, you know, one day we're both going to be 45, 50 years old, married with children, and we'll be saying, oh, when we were young, we used to do this. I said, all this singing, singing that I've been doing around the place, like we actually have to do mm. something about it. At the time, you know, I was going to school. I'll never forget, I was going to school. I had an internship with General Electric because mm. um, I was going to school for engineering. And so I would go to school from, I'd go to work from 7.30 in the morning till mm. about two. Then I would go to school from two to about seven, 8 p.m. And then we would drive two hours south to the city to go and record and we would record overnight until so two, basically three the work the ethic did not start to no, no 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 but that's what you, that's what you had to do and at the time 
Jay-Z still is probably my favorite artist of all time. Not just because of the that. music, but because of the business moves. Yeah. And I remember we'd, we'd read an interview where he said he couldn't find the right record deal, so they decided that they would start their own label themselves. Okay. And so I just called him up. I said, you know what? All this music that we're recording, we're going to start our own label. So we on the phone, we just came up with the name and registered the company the next day, <laughs> and, and that was it. Started. And that's how we started. But when you brought it to Nigeria, yeah. you, people must have thought, these guys are not okay because at the time when right. you were doing EME, um, people didn't take they didn't take like the business side mm -hmm. like seriously. Mm -hmm. You couldn't really say that artists were making that much money right. from being artists. Right. So let's talk about the business model behind the music industry in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What are the revenue streams? How do people make money? Mm. Okay, how to make money in the music business um, in Nigeria? The two i would say main sources of income mm -hmm. are performances and endorsements okay um obviously when you have music that people want to hear typically you know your your manager or your agent whoever it is will be taking calls on when people want you to see yeah. you perform um so performances you kind of just have to have the music right and if you get the music right and, and it's, it's popular, popular enough you'll, you'll get start to shows. get that too. Okay. the other thing that you have is obviously there's a whole digital income which is huge so that's everything from your itunes to your spotify to your title mm. to your um even your youtube your yeah. youtube views mm. people don't realize that artists send people to go and watch their video on youtube <laughs> because we make ad money from, from it. that and then obviously what has been key a, 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 an important piece of revenue for me has been endorsement deals and what that is is just kind of understanding the, the thin line between corporate and entertainment. I can see that, but let's let's dial back a little bit. You're okay. responsible for one of arguably Africa's biggest artists. No, Whiskey. God is responsible for that. <laughs> I'm Whiskey. not responsible. Well, somebody could, some, some would say you made a little, you took a little, risk. I, took, you I played a role. I you played a role. invested yes. in his career. Yes. That album definitely, I was pregnant when that album came out. Were you? And, like it's helped me lose weight because I was listening to it and you're like, working out all the time back nice. and forth like the nice. whole time so it was an amazing album nice. and he was a kid mm -hmm. so you took a you took a risk in investing you know in that artist mm -hmm. so I want to talk to you a little bit about you know in Nigeria mm -hmm. there's so much tension between like artists and their record labels mm -hmm. because you know when they're starting out first you invest so much in them mm -hmm. and then when they get big or slightly big mm -hmm. um there's now tension when it comes to like the money aspect of things right. like you see with different record labels right now so many different people are suing different people so what is the issue because i can imagine that it'll be very capital intensive right um or a very capital intensive project to create right a brand right. you know for an artist that's successful so here's the thing for me like you said i'm both I, i've been an artist and a label owner mm. so i kind of see both sides of, of the, coin. the coin um so i understand where the issues really are okay um i'll start from the label perspective nigeria as it is does not create strong enough institutions mm. especially if we're talking about the music business mm. and the reason i say that is because the pillars that hold up the business in other parts of the world don't exist are kind of non-existent or so they're, they're a shadow of what they should be and mm. what i mean is like in terms of your royalties your publishing uh you know if you have a hit song on american radio your royalties from that your children if it's <laughs> enough of a hit song your children yeah. will be able to eat out yeah. of it in nigeria People play your stuff on TV and Pretty radio much, without it's paying. only really the artist who mm. gets a chance to milk that song and to exploit it and to, mm. to create wealth from that art. If you think about it, you know, think of like the greatest music that Nigeria has ever created, mm. right? So OJB and Two Face made African Queen. Yeah. A few years later, OJB didn't have much to show for it because he wasn't out like Two Face performing mm. every weekend. And the same thing goes for the label, same thing goes for the producers. Uh, look at Nice's Gongwaso. I mean, Nice really and Idi well. Kabasa should their children should be billionaires based on how big how much that contributed, mm. and that is the problem that we have in Nigerian society in terms of what we focus on. So the labels are not as strong as they could be, right? So you have labels that are actually 
basically existing off of the show income that the artist make. has gone out to make. Which, in other parts of the world, that's the one that the labor would have even left for the artist. That, okay, you have done everything, <laughs> now go on tour and make extra mm. money for yourself. Whereas here, the entire business Is lives off show. of that. Now, for the, from the artist's perspective... Now you know, they walk. Exactly. So, <laughs> so for the artist, it's like, yeah, yeah, you helped me to this point, but... You know, I'm, I'm out star. working every <laughs> week, you know, so so there's all of that. So what I would say is, first of all, between labels and artists, the labels should have a lawyer. The artists should have a lawyer. Mm. It's very important. Like, I can't, I tell people all the time, they come to me for advice. Oh, this person has a deal for me. Da, da. I say, have you shown it to your lawyer? And They're like nine times out of ten, they don't even have a lawyer. And mm. they're looking, I say, yeah, I can advise you. I've, I've been in the business long enough to know what to look out for. Mm. But I'm not a, an entertainment <laughs> lawyer. You need a lawyer, you know and so the and then because you're assigned to a label that has a lawyer does not mean you have a lawyer yourself. yeah you need to get someone that represents exactly. your own interest and and both sides need to sit at the table and say these are the terms and and understand fully the agreements they're going into mm. so your business has gone from record label focus mm -hmm. to a business model that's focusing on the branding mm -hmm. with both um talent mm -hmm. and companies and mm -hmm. you know talent management mm -hmm. i think that's really interesting mm -hmm. what inspired this pivot and you know what were the financial implications of that um well firstly we had been functioning as a record label for 10 years yeah right and you know we you, like you said we had our successes mm -hmm. in my career with scales yeah. dj exclusive and then shady and yola who you know made progress not quite didn't get to obviously the wisdom yeah. but we you know we'd made some progress as a label over the years but you know i think first of all it's just understanding kind of where you are mm. um and what your goals are and where you're positioned and for us it was like okay we've done the label thing for 10 yeah. years and you know it's, it's, it's done it's, it's we've had our, our wins mm. um we've taken our lumps but we just really weren't there anymore. And you can't do the same thing over and over and expect mm -hmm. different results. So, you know, we wanted it just fresh life as a company. And so, and then also originally, EME was never meant to be just a label. Yeah, a label. Label was how we kind of started to launch my music and to get other artists going. But we felt like we could do that for more than just musicians. So when you talk about the talent management, now we work with just not just musicians, actors, OAPs, mm. comedians, and we're even evaluating the sports agency business. So Banky, yes, you had a wedding that broke the internet in 2017. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the whole world was interested in it. You know, and people, you know, often wonder about how you know expensive weddings are and everything, mm -hmm. but we don't seem to be able to reconcile like what happens in Hollywood with mm -hmm. what happens in the Nigerian entertainment um, right. um, sector. So we confuse price points for value, mm -hmm. right? You hear things like Gucci Mane and Keisha Kior's wedding that aired on BET mm -hmm. was worth $1.7 million. But I'm pretty sure that they did not spend $1.7 million oh, yeah, on their wedding. For example, her dress was like $15,000. But the wedding, wedding dress designer will think about the fact that it's going to air on BET. Yeah. 88 million families tune 100%. in to watch, yeah. you know, the show. So how I'm getting value from that. The way I convert that audience mm -hmm. will make me way more than $15,000. Um, so with your wedding. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll, give, I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. um, you, you actually put up a very perfect example. Yeah. And this is what I, it's kind of like an internal rule that we have. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you are going to charge me full price for yeah. something, I don't need to put it up. Then I don't need to advertise it for yeah. you. So why would I say, oh, this person did this or this person <laughs> did that? I'm not going to do it because I know the, the value. value that I bring to the table. I know what my audience mm -hmm. is. So I don't mind paying for something full price. But if I do, then you don't get the perks I have the of exact working same with me. Role. And then if if you do create that kind of relationship and understand the value that we both bring to the table then yes, I will spend money with you, but yes, I will also help you advertise Probably, what you're doing. Yeah. And that is what, like you said, what people need to understand, especially people in the in the entertainment business who yeah. have the following that a lot of people are trying to get to, mm -hmm. is understanding that audience that you have and understanding how to leverage it so that, you know, it you're makes you- are creating customers for the brands that you're You're creating customers with. for the brands. You're also not taking on unnecessary 
costs and expenses mm -hmm. yourself you know it's just you know it's like understanding that you know so you use a lot of your partnership to sort of subsidize the oh cost, yeah of course i mean if, it, it, it it makes perfect sense i mean if you have those relationships already and those people are trying to get to your audience then sure yeah. i mean reduce my <laughs> cost yes and then i will absolutely say that you did this or you did that and okay. and so for things and, not, and this is not just for with like a, a wedding. wedding this is with lifestyle album launch yeah. with lifestyle with whatever it is that you're doing you, you constantly have to be thinking about what value that you have and what you bring to the table mm -hmm. and how to leverage that and to partner with others who are because everybody's trying to get to a goal and if your journeys to your individual goals li line up then why not partner it just it makes i it love makes it better. so it's important to be super resourceful oh, with yes. your platform no question okay let's talk about personal wealth so a lot of artists, globally even, not mm -hmm. just in Nigeria, they may make a lot of money throughout mm -hmm. their career. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, you know, they, there's nothing to show for it. They're yeah. broke. And it's like, wow, you made yeah. millions of Naira. Like, yeah. what happened? So what advice do you have for artists who are coming up about building their own personal um, net worth? Not just be, finding a balance between spending on the cars and the bling and, right. and actually building assets that can protect them in the future. Right. Um, I would say that, first of all, your money should make money. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's not enough to just earn income. Yeah. So for an artist, for instance, you're getting paid for your shows. Mm. Don't forget that your shows... That show income will only be there while those songs and you are uh -huh. as popular as yeah. it currently is. You know, while you're there and you're making all this money, secure the things that are important. I like, personally, I like real estate mm. because it's easy. Mm. And because it's, it's very hard for real estate see. to lose value. Yeah. I mean, it happens, you know, when like housing markets crash mm. and all that. But by and large, over this course of your life, real estate is a pretty safe, easy investment. investment. Mm. Get a nice area, nice location buy land, buy so, a house, build a house. You're actually leading to my next question because I was yeah. going to ask you what your best investment is. Like, Oh, unquestionably real estate. Real estate. Unquestionably. That's... Any particular real estate investment that has like grown, I would just appreciated? Say, I would just like... say real estate in general. Like the portfolio has appreciated over time. And it's something that I'm hoping to continue, continue to, to, do to build. Continue to do systematically. So, that, so my goal is that in 10 years, I want to be like a... <laughs> Aside from all the other things that I am, yeah. I want to be like a real estate mogul. I love it. Ten so years sure. from now, you like I want to have, I want to be a landlord, have yes. multiple places around, not just Nigeria, that's, around that's the world. The that people are renting and I'm buying and selling, and that's something that I want. I love it. What's your biggest money mistake? How did you recover from it? And you know, what did you learn from it? My biggest money mistake was turn up. <laughs> you know, just that. That, that life being style. out, yeah. you know, all the time and footing the bill for these random club nights where there's no celebration per se. It's just, oh, Not it's a Friday night. And so you're in the club guzzling however many bottles. And there was yeah. a period of my life where I was I was completely clueless with that. Yeah. So that would be my, my biggest money mistake. And then what I learned from it was just to sit up and be like, guy, dog, this mm -hmm. is not the plan. Like, yeah. you, know, this, you, you can't be... That, there's an a, opportunity cost for the, those exactly. sorts of like Exactly, and instead expenses. of wasting money on a weekly basis, start putting it away and putting it towards real estate or other investments that you think would make okay, sense. Okay, so now apart from the turn up, like we've talked about, you know, saving and investing, well, you know, it's also important to find a balance. So what oh, are yeah. the things that you, you like to splurge on now? Things that I don't mind spending money on is um, probably travel. I kind of probably like that was what you were going to say. And, the, and people who see me travel all the time, mm -hmm. don't be fooled. <laughs> Most of the time that I travel is for business. Yeah. So I'm I'm fortunate enough that my job allows, allows for people to need to fly me to places. So mm. because you see me traveling doesn't mean that I'm every time I, I spend tickets. a lot of money, on it, it doesn't mean that. But it is one of my hobbies. And then I try to make sure that at least once or twice a year, mm. you know, if, we, if I can take some time out for Madame and I to go somewhere nice, and just do that. enjoy that. I, I because I feel like it's good to it's good for even spiritually to get away, to recharge, to kind of shut off your phone and just rest and strategize and come back, you know, feeling fresher. So that's that's what I like. Too. I love it. Speaking of Madame, before you guys got married, you know, people talk about you know spiritual counseling, like yes. with church and stuff. Yes. Did you guys have money conversations? Oh yeah. 
Um, I think that. I mean, I, I would imagine that your money personalities are quite different. Here's what I'll say. I'll say that. Period. When you're getting married, not that this is a marriage <laughs> show, but when you're when you're going to make that kind of decision, counseling in general is completely mm. is so important. Yeah. Because these are two very different states of mind, two very different mentalities coming together to mm. say, you know what, let's make this thing work. And so, counseling spiritually, uh, you know, your you, physically, yeah. uh, you know, just. Yeah, mentally but your in relationship Nigeria, and in then Nigeria, your money yeah. is, is also it's important to have that money conversation about this is what is needed for the house this is how we're going to do it are you going to have a joint account are you going to not have a joint separately? account separately you know just to understand where you are and to set financial goals for the family like in terms of even if you don't have children when they come it's not when they come what are we start, how do we start planning for that you now? start putting money away because i I'm, start, i ask that because know. i think it's a really important thing that we really neglect in yeah. this part of the world we focus on spiritual counseling which is great yeah. but we don't have enough conversations before marriage about money and we make assumptions yeah. about who your partner is yeah so to round up my last two questions one what is your smart money mantra like your investment philosophy, the one thing you absolutely have to do with your money no matter what. Uh, I read somewhere that it's important that most wealthy people have seven streams, streams of, of income. income. Yeah. And I, I took that to heart. So mm. I've, I've always wanted more than just this one thing that mm. I'm doing. And so now I have, I don't know if I have seven, but I have multiple <laughs> You're streams. working towards I'm it. I'm working towards yeah. it that at any given point in time, I should have multiple areas that income is being generated from and not just this one thing that I'm doing. I love it. So that's I love my... it. Um, final question. Mm. If you had a billion naira, mm -hmm. how would you spend it? How would you invest it? <laughs> um, if I had a billion naira, I would probably give 25% of it away okay. between church and charity, charitable contributions. Oh. Uh, and then for the rest of it, um, I'm sure you can tell that real estate is extremely important <laughs> to me. So I would dump like a significant amount in real, in real estate. estate. I would um, invest in other businesses that I think are the future. So I think that tech is would very important. I think, I mean, let's, let's, one, th one of my favorite things that's happening in the world today is that the biggest transportation company doesn't, doesn't own, own one any car. Cars. The biggest uh, real estate company doesn't own a piece of real yeah. estate. Uber, Airbnb. So I would, Investing, I'm in actually like currently that. behind yeah. the scenes investing in some tech things that yeah. I hope you know will blow will pop off. Soon. So I would definitely invest in real estate technology. Uh, I've always wanted to own a restaurant. So I would use some of it to do my restaurant. I love it. And uh, and then just look for other areas. And then I would I would travel. I know. I'd take my wife somewhere nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's so sweet. Yeah. Banky W, you are a truly inspiring guest. And Thank I you very love much. all your money moves and Thank you. all the advice that you've given you know, today. I think that young entertainers looking at you and when they watch this episode, they're going to have a lot to learn. Amen. Thank you so much <laughs> for, for coming me. on the show. VAT, value added tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria it pays to pay your tax. And we're back. So that was a really exciting interview with Banky W. I think that all the smart money moves that he's making, a lot of young entertainers need to watch and learn. The highlights for me from that interview were one, when you're going into a business transaction with someone else, have legal representation so that you make sure that your goals are aligned with the entity that you're going into business with. Two, create multiple streams of income because the average millionaire has at least seven streams. Banky has created multiple streams of income for himself 
through acting, music, directing, and all his brand ambassadorships. And he's also started becoming a big investor in real estate. And the third thing that I thought was a fantastic highlight was his money mistake and how he had learned from it. Banky used to be the king of the Lagos party and was about that champagne life, but he's learned to find a balance um, between spending and investing by making sure that he's investing towards building his personal net worth. And that requires a lot of financial discipline. So thank you so much for watching this episode. See you next time. Thank you.